how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. Today's video is my monthly favorites. I'm gonna chat about all of the things that I loved in the month of October. I can't believe October's over. Spooky season's coming to an end. And as much as I am looking forward to the holidays, because I love that time of year as well, the last quarter of the year is always my favorite, but I'm sad to see spooky season go. Thankfully, it's kind of spooky around in my household, so it's not like it's going away forever, but it is it is officially done for the year as far as how the general public sees Halloween. I think this video is going up the day before Halloween as well, so I hope you have a wonderful day tomorrow. I would love to know what you're dressing up as and what your plans are. I will probably just make Halloween-shaped pasta and it's gonna be wonderful. But I'm excited for this video. I love kind of recapping my favorite things for the month, the things that stood out to me. I have makeup, I have hair care, my favorite books, some clothing items, a kitchen gadget various things to chat about and I'm excited to share them with you. I love hearing your favorites as well, so please leave your favorite things from October in the comments below. Before we get into my favorites, I did of course film this look. It should already be up on my Instagram, YouTube Shorts, TikTok, all that good stuff. As far as my accessory details, I'm actually gonna get to them later because I do have a jewelry favorite I wanna talk about, so stay tuned. But without further ado, let's just hop into my October favorites. I have some really good things from this last month. Let's kick it off with makeup. I feel like that's always a good place to start. We'll just go in the order that I do my makeup. The complexion thing that really stood out to me is the Physicians Formula Butter Glow Liquid Highlighter. Linda from Glitter Fallout got a bunch of Physicians Formula goodies when she went to Creators and Friends back in September. And when I visited her early in the month, um, she had some extras of different things, so she gave me this one and I've been loving it. If you know, you know, I'm very picky when it comes to liquid and cream highlighters. I feel like they're either not enough or they move my makeup around. And I feel like this is like the best of both worlds. It gives such a beautiful glow on the skin. It does not move my makeup around at all. I can also mix this in with foundation. That's what I did today. I just love this. I think it is so beautiful blends so nicely as a highlighter with liquid blushes and stuff. This is such a standout product to me. I love it. I love it so much. Moving on to eyes, kind of skipping over to eyes now. I wanted to talk about my top three palettes for the month. And if you saw my recent ranking, my last 10 palettes, you'll already know what these are. These are in no particular order. If you want to know the order of my preference, you can check out my ranking video. Um, but first is the Vamp palette from Bella Beauty Bar. This is so beautiful. This launched earlier this month and I love it i think it is so cool it's one of my favorite palettes the brand has done i love their spooky palettes they do such a good job every single time the shimmers in here are on another level they are so cool i'll just you know swatch a couple let's just have a little a little teeny swatch party i don't know why i'm swatching with my non-dominant hand that's that, that, that this is not my hand <laughs> i feel like i can't even make a straight line my goodness but just look how cool these are Really reflective, multi-chrome. Some have kind of that holographic reflect as well. This is just such a cool color story. I love the vampire theme. It just brings me a lot of joy. And these colors are just so, so fun. I love red and purple together. I never get sick of it. I just think this was such a winning palette for October. I've also been loving the Calavera palette from Gourmand Girls. I think this launched at the tail end of September, but I mostly used it in October. It's a tribute to the owner's grandparents and kind of an homage to like Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. And it's very, very cool. I think this color story is so fun. It's such a good combination of brights like borderline neon in some cases and pastels and then darker grungy shades and these shimmers are the best shimmers that the brand has ever done let me use my actual dominant hand to swatch some of these this shade in particular it's like really marbled and super cool we'll do this really prominent red as well i don't know what they did different in this palette but these shimmers are just like on another level i feel like their shimmers have always been pretty good but these ones are just like extra glossy, extra shifty, extra shiny. They are so, so pretty. I feel like the camera isn't even doing these justice. I've had so much fun playing with this palette. Every time I use it on my eyes, I feel like I just love it more and more. I feel like it's so playful and so fun. I feel so creative when I use it. I feel like there's an endless amount of color combos without it just being a basic rainbow palette. They did such a good job with this. Definitely one of my favorites the brand has done. And last but not least is the collab between Blend Bunny and Robert Welsh, The Divination. They killed it with this collection and this palette is such a standout to me. It is so pretty. It's such a good combo of like pastel meets grunge. And again, the shimmers are on another level. I don't know what they did, but these are like ultra sparkly. Let's just like grab a couple, a couple random ones. Oh, they're just so wet looking. Look at that. They're just so glossy looking and so pretty. I feel 
so cool when I wear this palette. The shimmers are just like ultra, I don't know, just glossy. That's my favorite word to use for this because it's not like they feel sticky. They just look wet. They are so cool, so pretty. They did such a good job on this collaboration. I've had so much fun playing with this. I love the witchy vibes. I love the grungy tones. I love like a green, blue, purple, like kind of situation. And this is just super, super cool. So huge congrats to the brand and Robert, you guys did so good. Still sticking with eyes, Menagerie sent over some of their newest moonlit metal toppers that I did not have in my collection. And honestly, I love all of these and I just feel like I have to talk about them. I'm actually wearing three of them on my eyes today, kind of like in the outer, inner, and then inner corner. And I've used all of these, they're so pretty. I love their toppers, they're so, so cool. This one's the shade Atlas Moth, just like a super fun kind of like, like bluey, bronzy. It's just so, so gorgeous. I love the effect of these, they're so shiny and they stay put, like once they're on and they've dried, which is pretty fast, like enough time to work with them if you're trying to blend the edges, but they dry down pretty quick and then they do not move at all. These are so, so pretty. I've used these as liner. You can also use them as lip toppers. They're very cool. Pineapple Conure is so fun. That's the one I have on the outer half of my eye. It's on top of a black base, but it's very cool. It has like a really fun kind of yellow to pink shift. Oh, they're just so, so fun. Smooth, sparkly, enchanting. I love them. This one is Ibis, this red. I love this red. I did kind of like a soft red look with this over on like Instagram, YouTube shorts, TikTok, and it was so, so fun. I just love, like this metallic red is so cool. Lovebird is what's on the inner half of my lid today. It's so pretty. Just kind of like a soft blue, pink, a little bit sea foamy. It's a very interesting shade. I feel like this one has the most shifts. It's just so, so cool. It's like so hard for you to see all the shifts that are going on, but these are magical. And then last is the one that's in my inner corner. It's so cute. This one's Willow. It's just the most charming little like, you know, kind of white gold, but also a little pinky purpley when the light hits it just right. Very, very fun. I just wanted to shout these out. These bring me a lot of joy. I have so many of these and these new additions are fantastic. Moving on to lips, I just have one more makeup item and Menagerie did recently release five new fall liquid lipstick shades and they're all beautiful. They're all very cool. I did a lip swatch video on like my short form content if you wanna see all the shades, but my favorite one is this one. It's in the shade Mother Earth. It is the prettiest like dark brown like this is a deep espresso brown like as you can see like compared to my black top it's not black but it is a very dark brown it is so pretty like it almost looks black it's right on the cusp I just love this I'm such a sucker for a deep brown lip I think it's so pretty I think it looks good on everyone and I just love how dark it is I love that it's like right on that cusp of almost being black it is so pretty. I love their liquid lipstick formula. I've been using it for years and years and years. I reach for them fairly often. And this one in particular brings me so much joy. Moving on to hair care. These are actually products that I've been trying for a while. I just forget to talk about like hair care favorites when I discover new things. It's like my hair world is so separate from YouTube. Like that's my day job. That's what I do in my salon suite all the time. And then I don't know, it's like my brain does not focus on hair when I am on YouTube at all. And I still have no intention on ever doing like hair related videos. I just am very content keeping that part of my life, just my separate career away from the internet in that way. But I do wanna share personal hair care favorites here and there. And I'm finally remembering to share some recent ones. First being this Amika Reset Pink Charcoal Scalp Cleansing Oil. This is very cool. It's like on this little, this little guy and it's just like this jelly substance. I'll just take a tiny bit out. It's just like this gel. And what I do, I only wash my hair about once a week. Tomorrow is hair washing day, thank goodness. But because I only wash it once a week, by the time that day comes by, there's a lot going on in my hair. It's, it's a week old. There's probably lots of dry shampoo and various other products that I've used throughout the week. So my scalp needs a deep cleaning when the time comes. So what I do is I, whatever situation my hair is in, I take it down brush it out, and then I'll go through, let me put the lid on so I don't squeeze it all over my hair, but I'll go through and kind of like squirt little lines of this gel all throughout my scalp, and then I massage it in. The gel kind of turns into a, not really a foamy substance, but it kind of emulsifies a little bit. So it you work it all through your hair. Like it kind of turns like this, like it turns a little sudsy, 
but not like super lathery. But I kind of work that through my scalp, really scrub it, and it just helps my scalp feel so cleansed and renewed. Go in the shower, rinse that out, and then I start going in with my shampoos and conditioners and all that stuff. But I've been using this for about two months now, and I really love it. I think it's great. I've been using it every single time I'm about to wash my hair. It just makes my scalp feel so extra squeaky clean after not being washed for a week. And then another recent favorite that I've also been using probably about the same amount of time is the Joico Defy Damage Sleepover Overnight Nourishing Treatment. It looks like this. It is so good. I love Joico. I love the Defy Damage line. It is so good. Um, but I use this in my hair, on my ends. I probably use this about twice a week. I also use a dry mask from IGK that I talked about a few favorites videos ago. I'll kind of switch between these two, but I love these. I love using something at night to help nourish my hair. It kind of just comes out in a pump like this. And I'll, I'll usually do a few pumps in my hands, kind of rub it through, and then I work it through my ends, not on the scalp, but just on the ends, brush it through. And then when I wake up the next morning, my hair feels so soft. I typically tend to style my hair at night either in braids or in a bonnet, and then that combined with some leave-in treatment overnight, it just makes my hair feel so silky, so soft, keeps it very healthy and repaired and all the good yummy things. So those have been two standout products for me. When I discover hair care favorites, I tend to latch onto them forever. So it's not too often I'm discovering like, new life-changing things, but these are two that I'm very much in love with. Let's talk about earrings now. I got sent some earrings from Wendell Straw Studio. I'm so grateful for the gift. That's what this pair is right here. These little books, they're so cool. I'll actually hold one of them super up close so you can see they're made with like polymer clay. And these are some of the prettiest, most detailed earrings I own. They are just gorgeous. These little pink bats are so cute. I love the silver with the pink. And if you charge these in sunlight, they actually glow in the dark. They're so fun. These little shroomy ghosts, are you kidding me? They are so stinking cute. I love them. These ones are so fun. I've gotten a lot of compliments when I wear these. These like little bat plaques and they're kind of multi-chrome. They go from like green to purple. These are so, so cool and they just feel so fancy. And then last are these cutie little snakes. I love the gold with the sparkle. It's just so cute. I love these so much. I've been wearing them constantly. They're so detailed and so pretty, but they're also so lightweight. They don't feel super heavy in my ears at all. I love these and the brand was also super kind. They gave me a code, Batty Bean in all caps will save you 10%. It's not an affiliate code. I don't make money off of it. It's just for you to save money. Um, but as always, I'll have all of these products linked down below as well as any codes if I have any at all. I also have to shout out this pair of leggings that are currently in the wash. So I can't um, show them to you in real life, but I'm obsessed with the CRZ yoga brand on Amazon. They are my favorite for like athletic wear specifically like leggings, sports bras, stuff like that. And I've been on the hunt for a new pair of flare leggings. I have some old pairs from Aerie, which I enjoy, but the problem with me is I'm fairly taller. I am 5'8", and a lot of the time, flares especially, are just not quite long enough. Like, I want them to be long, you know? Like, I want them to taper and look just so long and lengthy and lovely. And I was so happy when I was searching for flare leggings under this brand specifically, since I already know I like the fit of them. They make this specific style with different lengths. So that makes me so happy. I ended up buying just the longest length that they had and they are perfect. They are so cute, so flattering, so comfortable. I already ordered another pair. They'll be here soon. So yeah, I'm obsessed with these. I cannot get enough. I'll probably order more pairs, honestly. I just wanna live in them. They are so cute and comfy and I, I just love. I love this brand and I love these leggings. And last fashion favor I have is a pair of shoes and I've been kind of itching for a pair of Birkenstocks for a while, but I just never did because one, I do think they're kind of ugly, like they're cute ugly. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Like I think the shoe itself is kind of ugly, but when paired with like a cozy fall outfit, I think they're kind of cute. Um, also Birkenstocks are expensive. But I went on Amazon and I found a dupe pair and I have been wearing these constantly. Again, I think in a way they're kind of ugly, but when paired with like, especially like the flared leggings that I just mentioned or baggy jeans and then a sweater, it's a cute fall moment. So I've been loving these and I feel like I just had to shout them out because I've worn them more times than I can possibly count. It's nice to have a pair of shoes that's comfy like a slipper, but I can kind of get away with wearing outside of the house. It's the best, so these have been great. Let's move on to a kitchen gadget. I have been wanting to make espresso at home for so long now. We used to have one of the Keurigs a long time ago that could make shots of espresso. I feel like that's what the basic ones do. And then eventually we upgraded to what I thought was a better Keurig years ago. I mean, it's nice in the sense that it can make a pot of coffee, but 
It only makes cups of coffee or pots of coffee. It does not do shots of espresso, unfortunately. And at the time when we bought it, I didn't really realize I would care. But as time has gone on, especially recently, I've really been itching to just make proper lattes or like a dirty chai latte, stuff like that. I needed espresso in my life, but I didn't wanna buy another big machine. And I was also worried if I bought a big machine, maybe I wouldn't get enough use out of it. So I ended up buying a small little stovetop espresso maker. This has been a quality of life improvement. I love this so much. I was worried this would be difficult to use. It is the easiest thing in the world. I don't think I'll ever even invest in a fancy espresso maker. I mean, never say never, maybe I will one day, but at the moment I'm very content. This is so easy, this was so affordable. This specific size makes three shots of espresso, but I know they make bigger sizes as well. But it just kind of comes apart like this. I used it literally this morning. I've used it every morning since I got it about two weeks ago. You take this little guy out, you put water in this up to like the knob, and then you, you put this guy on, and then you put your espresso in it. I've been using Cafe Bustello, but if you have recommendations, let me know. I feel like I'm on my espresso journey right now, so I would love to hear what your favorite recipes are. And then you just screw this on and you stick it on the stove on like medium heat, and like 10 minutes later, this is full of espresso. And it's fantastic, it's wonderful. My drinks in the morning taste so much better. I'm such a big fan. I haven't even touched my Keurig in the two weeks since I've had this. I just love it, it's so easy. I love just taking a minute to prepare it. I let it sit for 10 or so minutes and then it's just ready. So easy, so wonderful, literally a quality of life change. And I think the only other thing I wanna talk about is my favorite book of the month. I don't wanna drone on and on too much about multiple books just because the video after this is most likely gonna be my reading wrap up, Get Ready With Me, where I chat about all the books I read in October and do my makeup and give my non-spoiler thoughts on them. So if you're interested in that, check that out. That'll be super fun. I actually ended up having three five-star books so far for the month. There's still a few more days left in the month, so things could change. But as of right now, I have read three five-star books, which usually I maybe get one. I do find a lot of four stars, but a five-star, I just have to get a special feeling in my soul to give it a five-star. Um, but I'm not going to talk about all three of them. I'm just going to talk about my ultimate favorite of the three. And that is V.E. Schwab's The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. This was so good, I just finished it yesterday and this was such a magical experience. Basically, we have our main character, Adeline, Addie LaRue. It is the 1700s, she's put in a position where she feels desperate and she ends up making a deal or a bargain, if you will, and things get twisted. She ends up being cursed to not only live forever, but to also be forgotten. Anytime she meets someone, it's like they're meeting her for the first time. As soon as she's like out of their vicinity, they immediately forget about her. She's unable to leave any sort of mark. She can't write things down. She can't say her own name. Everything about her is just forgettable. She might as well be invisible, if you will. And throughout this book, we're getting kind of past and present timelines. We're going through like different stages over multiple centuries when she's first curse and all of her adventures beyond that and then more present time which I think this book was set in like 2014. She's just doing her thing in New York her day to day she's meeting people they're forgetting her she's meeting them again stuff like that. She ends up meeting somebody for the first time ever who actually remembers her the next day so this was just so cool it was whimsical and magical kind of adventurous with all the different things that are going on throughout centuries of her life it's also romantic it was just such a beautiful book. This has been hyped up for a long time. It's been recommended to me for a while. I'm so happy I finally read it. This is my first time reading this author's book. So if you have other recommendations, I would love to know. This was just such a good story. And typically I'm someone who really craves a lot of dialogue in books. I love banter between characters. I love discussions being had. And there is definitely dialogue in this book, don't get me wrong, but there's also lots of just like descriptive scenes and just general storytelling. And sometimes with certain books that can kind of like get boring to me or I'll get lost. Not with this, something about the writing, I was just sucked in from beginning to end. I loved this, I loved every moment of it. This was, I feel like a life-changing book. I feel like this is a book that I'm gonna think about forever. And yeah, that my friends is the end of this October favorites video. October's coming to a close. I can't believe this year is almost over, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Have you tried any of the things that I mentioned in this video? Again, I would love to hear what your favorites are from October, whether it's like skincare, food, a trip you took, anything at all. Just leave your favorites down below for me. If you made it to the end of this video, leave your current favorite emoji. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. And if if you're not already you can subscribe and you can now follow my second vlog channel now yes 
I have a new channel. I announced it recently, so you can go follow me over there for more content. Also, if you would like to, you can join my channel memberships. The link to sign up will be down below. There are different tiers with different perks, and I'd love to have you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.